Wow, look at this. This is my Rowan Magazine 74 subscriber copy. It arrived two weeks uh, before the September 1st uh, actual release date, roll and release date. I was so excited to see it. I sat right down, got myself a cup of tea and started looking through it to look at all the designs. I loved the cover. The uh, huge scarf by Martin Story that's on the cover is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's quite interesting. You'll, you'll hear about it a little bit later. I love that the model actually looks cold. I, um, I looked up where the, uh, photography was done and then I uh, saw that Rowan had released um, a little snippet of the the actual photograph shoot and you can see she's cold the wind's blowing and it's a little bit chilly these things are always done so far and ahead they are uh, you know this was probably last year sometime anyway I love the cover so let's have uh, let's have a little dive into the magazine now the first design in Magazine 74 is Himalayas by Lisa Richardson. So the, the design brief for this uh, Felted Tweed story was doing it your way. So all of the designers had no restrictions, just had to use Felted Tweed design the way you wanted to design. So Lisa has chosen a classic yoked style. It is knit from the top down, which is unusual for Rowan and it is also knit in one piece. It features this beautiful yoke patterning that's uh, mirrored on the edges, uh, the bottom edges of the sleeve and the body uh, near the ribbing. And also, if you don't like a cardigan idea with the, the scary sticking part, you can, uh, it's also shown here as a pullover. So you get two different styles with this one sweater design two different colorways and of course you can always recolor it to suit your personal taste with uh, the great selection of felted tweed shades that are available in the range. I absolutely love this and it's calling to me. Gully by Lisa Richardson is a classic Chanel style jacket. It's short to the waist long sleeves, no neck, um, and a textured textured uh, fabric. I love this design. It's, it's shown very casually here, but I could see it um, gussied up with some sparkly buttons and, and maybe even a bit of uh, uh, metallic thread throughout the design. I'd love to try that. I am not familiar with the mosaic knitting, and I looked at the chart and I thought, oh, how do you, how do you work this chart? So I actually got my uh, needles out and two shades of yarn. You use Rowan felt to tweed and uh, Rowan felt to tweed color. That gives the color gradient of the patterning. And um, sat down, did a swatch, and it's actually very simple. And I'll have a little discussion about that at the end of my review, okay? So I love this design too. Really, really adaptable, gorgeous fabric. Zagros by Georgia Farrell. This is an all over textural drop shouldered pullover, very classic styling. What makes it uh, different is these little pops of color that are scattered in tar little intarsia pieces that are scattered throughout the design in this really bright highlight color. I noticed at first the little, the black edging on one of the sleeves and around the neck. That's just the, the model wearing a, a garment underneath this design. I'm not sure why because felted tweed and kid silk haze is really a luscious, really rather warm fabric. But anyway, so don't don't think that that's part of the design. The, the red is the accent that uh, finishes off the rib. I think this could be a, a unisex design. Balkan by Quail Studio is a classic all-over cable pullover. It uses a really traditional six front, six back cable design, 
repeated throughout um, the it's a drop shoulder shaping so this is another design that I can see being a totally unisex design I also can see this in um, navy blue say navy blue with with jeans would that be great or one of the lighter colors it would sort of look like a traditional Aran sweater but it would be nice and light because it is in felted tweed And here it is, the cover design by Martin Story. It's Serac. It's a large scarf that um, has a 54 roll zigzag pattern on it. Now, this is all written out, it's not charted. And it's very interesting that this is also a slip stitch pattern. Now, unlike Lisa Richardson's Gully, which was a slip stitch um, in garter stitch, this is slip stitch in stocking stitch. So um, you'll have to keep an eye on the written pattern, but it's uh, 54 rows and then the colors are changed up and you're only working with one color per row. So that makes it quite simple. You don't have to worry about your uh, floats quite so much. So um, this is a very intriguing. I might have to make a swatch of this also. Ridge by Martin Story. It's a cardigan, knit in pieces, the uh, all over diamond pattern you can see has got um, stocking stitch and garter stitch and then there's some traveling stitches to make the diamond shape and yarn over so it's, it's a little bit on the complicated side but not too hard I don't think. The front uh, cabled uh, band is knit in conjunction with the front pieces so then it goes up and over the back and joins at the back of the neck when you're putting it together it's a really classy uh, looking cardigan looks great here in the bolder color that uh, was used on the model summit by georgia farrell this is a, an intriguing design. The um, second photo shows it more of a triangular shape, while this main photo uh, refer, looks like it's a rectangle. I checked on the Ravelry listing and it lists a rectangular shape, but it's interesting that it has this uh, row of, of uh, shaping that you can see here going down. So I, I gotta admit, I'm totally confused by this design. I tried to draw it out reading the instructions. So um, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see until someone actually knits it. I love the graphic colors of this. George is known for her architectural influence in her designing. And this is uh, another one of her great designs. So hurry up somebody and knit this so I can see what it looks like. Boulder by Vib Ulrich is another top down in the round design. While it has this um, graphic patterning on the yoke, uh, it's not repeated anywhere else. And I'm going to be really honest with you, I would probably rather just knit this uh, nice and plain because I love the, the rib detail that has the stocking stitch rolled edging on the ribs. And that pattern is not repeated anywhere else in the design. So I, I don't know, it just doesn't do anything for me personally. But if you like it, all the power to you. But it's a, a great top down in the round design. And let's face it, you could um, personalize it if you wanted to. Just my two cents worth. Matterhorn by Chloe Thurlow. Chloe uses three shades of felted tweed for this all over um, checkerboard patterning. It's intarsia checkerboard. I love the three shades she's used here, watery, frozen, and iolite, number 208. Uh, it could easily be recolored, you know, into a really classic two shades of gray with black or gray black with red uh, uh, as an accent. I also think that it could be easily retweaked a little bit uh, to make it a unisex design for a guy. I'd make it a little bit um, longer, perhaps. 
and uh, I'd have to look at, it's a drop shoulder, so I think it would be easily adjusted at the, uh, the, arm, scythe, the arm scythe. Now in this case, the button band is knit separately and sewn on. So while this is a little, maybe a little bit trickier uh, button band application, done right, it gives you this beautiful uh, button band that goes up and, and holds the V-neck perfectly. What do you think? I think it's, it's very classy. Arette, another Quail Studio design. Felta Tweed and Kid Silk Haze work together, makes a really luxurious fabric. And here, Felta Tweed Seafair is held with Kid Silk Haze Turkish Plum to give you this gorgeous, uh, luxurious navy pullover. It is a drop sleeve design. There's no body shaping at all. The sleeves look, look uh, quite deep. There is um, a turn under section so you end up with a, a double edge on the cuff. The um, instructions note that you leave the side seams open for the uh, bottom 10 centimeters, so a split seam. But it does have an uneven hem. It's not an uneven hem which is, I know, is all the rage right now. This one doesn't have an une uneven hem. And the collar is uh, knit up to the length of 30 centimeters, so it's a nice, deep collar. Gives you this uh, luxurious fold-over, really cozy fold-over. And I could see that this would be a great sweater in the winter. You could pull that collar up and, and just snuggle into it when you're out. I really love this design. The Cascade Vest and the Corny Scarf, both by Erica Knight. Erica uses nine shades of felted tweed in a, a sequential pattern that she repeats throughout the vest and in the scarf. The scarf is ribbed to, um, to make it a narrow scarf, but it's quite long, so it, it can be wound around and layered over top of the vest. The vest has no shaping at all, so I think that this is something that could be definitely made into uh, a unisex design. Ascend is uh, a poncho sort of Ruana design by Quail Studio. It's done in uh, felted tweed and kid silk haze, so um, we all know what a lovely fabric that makes. It's, it's very simple. It's all stocking stitch. You see there's a little bit of garter stitch. Uh, there's a garter stitch edging up the front and around the back of the neck. Um, and I love that uh, fringe detail. While it's styled very casually here, this would, wouldn't this be gorgeous in like black? Uh, very elegant. Uh, something that you could just throw on and, and off you go. Chloe Thurlow uses three gorgeous shades of felted tweed, frozen, bottle green, and duck egg to create this um, striped scarf. So it's, it's uh, vertical striping uh, joined in tarsia and uh, with an interesting rib to make a very uh, luxurious 86 inch long scarf and uh, I think it looks absolutely fabulous, don't you? Another scarf, this one uh, by Martin Story, Scree, uses uh, felted tweed, clay on the background with um, alternating shades, treacle, avocado, zinnia, peony, and cumin with this all over uh, pattern that's repeated. And you'll notice that the treacle is between uh, each of the other colors. So treacle is the predominant um, accent shade. So if you're going to uh, recolor it, keep that in mind. The completed scarf is nine inches wide and 86 and a half inches long. It's knit in the round. So, so all your stranding and your uh, yarn ends and that will be on the inside of this round tubular piece of knitting scar on the scarf. This is a classic Martin Cardigan Sierra shown here in uh, avocado felted tweed. Martin um, is known for his cardigans. This has got a twisted rib 
it has uh, stocking stitch back and sleeves because the front has this show stopping pattern on it that has uh, yarn overs and knit two togethers and it has an MK which is make knot. I find that very intriguing. It's not a bobble, it's a knot. So uh, I think shown here with the dress, but I can also see this with a pair of jeans, especially in that avocado color, it would look great with navy, don't you think? This top down pullover uh, design, Brooks by Vibe Ulrich, it's knit in the round. It uh, uses felted tweed rose quartz held together with kit silk haze majestic. Uh, it's a textural yoke pattern, and what makes this uh, unique is that the main body or background of the fabric is reverse stocking stitch, and you'll see this one row of uh, stocking stitch goes down and carries down from the yoke through the body and on the sleeves. Very effective. Glacier by Lisa Richardson is another top down in the round design. Uh, Lisa uses an unusual rib here around the neck that uh, is used to, to um, make almost like a faux uh, ragland where the shaping is for the yoke. And then that rib is repeated on the sleeves and on the body, a nice deep rib to uh, set off the stocking stitch body. Elevation by Arna and Carlos. This dicky or neck warmer design is uh, uses two shades of felted tweed in a stranded pattern. And then the other two shades are added on with duplicate stitch, making uh, it a little bit easier. You wouldn't really want to be uh, dealing with three colors per row. I love the way this sits underneath a jacket. It gives you the look of having a, a, a really nice warm sweater without the bulk on the body. And, and sometimes that's just perfect, right? That's all you need. Kaif has done a, one of his classic styles here. It's uh, called buttress. It's an uh, oversized uh, cardigan or jacket. It's very boxy, wide shaped. It has uh, an overall intarsia triangular design. Alabaster is the background shade, and there are uh, pops of other colors, lime, mineral, fjord, peach, duck egg, cinnamon, aster, and heliotrope uh, triangles overall, all done in tarsia. The edges are um, uh, four rows of garter stitch, so a little garter stitch bump uh, edging nice petite little buttons to not take away from the design of the cardigan itself so it's it is as i say it's very boxy very wide so have a good look at the sizing uh, but just make sure that you take the the sizing into account when you figure out the length of your sleeves because um you actually sort of i think you want to measure yourself with your arms straight out from wrist to wrist to figure out the sizing just my thought okay I really like this again and Tarj is calling to me <laughs> Erica Knight's using stripes here again in this cardigan uh, the name Canyon she uses eight different shades to make this um it's a, it's a waterfall front there's no back neck shaping at all so you knit the front, each front piece and the back piece all knitted separately. You pick up stitches and knit the front uh, front bands. And then you pick up stitches on the end of uh, the end edge of the band and you use those stitches along with the shoulder stitches to do a three needle bind off at the shoulders. So it's a nice neat finish. Uh, uh, the colors are gorgeous. And uh, the sizing is, a, is uh, it's oversized, but it's not as drastic as the Kaif, uh, Kaif cardigan. Andes is another design by Kaif Facet. It is um, a sort of a coat cardigan style, longer length. It uses 11 shades of felted tweed, and it's grounded with the use of black throughout uh, the intarsia patterning and the, uh, the band on the front and, and the cuffs and on the bottom of the cardigan. 
it's um, all graphed out for you and the, uh, the raglan shaping makes the patterning go continuously across the top. So it's it's a beaut. I I love this. It's gorgeous. I wish I loved. Uh, I wish I was an Antarja person, but um, maybe someday. I'm not sure when, but someday. Chloe Thurlow uses um, felted tweed and felted tweed color in this design range. It's a classic drop shouldered uh, sweater. It has very deep ribs on the bottom and the cuffs of the sleeve. The accent pattern, the stranded patterning, is uh, done using a felted tweed color, so it, it will subtly change throughout the, the design. I think, again, this could be um, a, a unisex design. Maybe you just may want to change those little flowers out for an X and O or something, or just some other a small patterning, but very wearable. Uh, very over a little bit oversized so very comfortable relaxed fit the archive design in magazine 74 is Z Franziska by Galena Carroll only using four shades of felt to tweed this is a is a like a swancho style sweater it's a poncho but it's got sleeves and it's got a huge big uh, stand-up rolled over turtleneck cowley type collar. You, I think it's even long enough that you could pull it up and make a hood type of thing out of it. The collar measures 46 centimeters. So yes, you could almost make like a little hood out of that. Rowan are featuring a selection of their archive designs from the magazines. The designs were selected as favorites from uh, current Rowan designers. For example, uh, this is Lydia by Kay Facet. It was in um, magazine 48, the Russian doll. Uh, Russian doll was the name of the story. And this sweater, everybody went really sort of crazy about it. There was also a matching scarf to go with it, knit in the round. This tiny little petite repeated pattern throughout the color changes um, it was, this is just such a gorgeous design and, and I've seen different versions of it. Someone I know made it into a long cardigan. This dress is, is gorgeous. And when you combine the two of them together, what an amazing, uh, outfit you've got. Great for using up stash. If you're someone like me who has a big stash of felted tweed. So instead of talking about all these designs that were picked by the designers, and you'll see them in the magazine, and what they're doing, or what is doing, is making the individual designs available as downloads. What I am going to do next is share with you my collection of designs that I have knit in felted tweed. So are you ready for a little dive into my knit closet? Okay, let's get started. So this is my new favorite drink this summer. It is Fever Tree Pink Grapefruit. I love it. It's tart, yet a little bit sweet. If you see it in your store, give it a try. So while it's blazing hot, it really does seem sort of crazy to be thinking about um, woolen knits, but we are knitters, right? So we, we think about woolen knits. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to show you uh, the history of what I've knit in felted tweed over the years. And you know what? I don't even know the names of all of them. I don't know what, what uh, publications they were in. You'll have to look at my Ravelry page, which is Life Lackadaisical. I'll put it in the notes below my Ravelry name, if you don't know it already. If you click on uh, the tab for F for felted tweed, all the the, the um, garments and, and whatever I've knit in felted tweed will come up in a, a saved list for you. So you can have it all, look at all the felted tweed garments if there's something here that you see that maybe you want to knit also. So, uh, and oh, one of the things I did was, um, this is Lisa Richardson's 2017, I'll just get out of the way, her 2017 blanket knit along cro crochet. I love this because I really wasn't a crocheter until I did this blanket. 
by do, doing each of the, um, the sections and learning the new crochet terms. I actually made um, little videos of each of these motifs because I felt that as a new crocheter, I could help other crochet, new crocheters learn how to crochet. So you'll find that on my YouTube channel. So let's get started. This is my big bag of felted tweed knits, and this is by no means all of my felted tweed knits because I discovered that some of them either have been gifted or I'm not sure what, where have they gone? But anyway, there's a few things that have disappeared, just small things, hats and things like that. So this is my, um, well, I haven't been knitting this summer. I have been doing a little tiny bit of sewing. This is my Luskentire bag by Guthrie and Ganny. If you're in the UK, you'll recognize that. If you're sores, you'll recognize that name. And this is uh, was a kit and it's a huge big bag. And normally it would be closed, this would be tied up, but it's they've got so many felted tweed knits in here, I can't even close it. So let's get started. Okay, I think I need a drink before we start. Okay, let's go. So the, the very first thing that uh, coincides with um, felted tweed and my love of felted tweed is this design and it's Anastasia. It was in the same magazine as um, the Lydia garment that you'll see in the Rowan um, magazine 74. It's one of the, the uh, patterns that they're offering as a single pattern download. This was a part of the Russian doll collection. And I think was it was a magazine 48, can't remember. Anyway, by Marie Wallen. Sometimes she uses three colors. Her very classic, she uses this pattern a lot, the little tartan patterns and little flowers. And I love the big, big rib. Every once in a while, I, I think I should, um, I, you know, I don't know. What do you do with, with knits when you're sort of over them, being there, done that? And it's a little snug on me, I have to admit now. So anyway, I'm thinking about what I can do. Another, another, another story there. So. Second up was uh, this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, I just love this pattern, um, Granny Square shawl, scarf. And this is huge. I think I made it a little bit longer, but it was in a kid's book, a winter kid's book, a Rowan winter kid's book. And um, I, I, because I wasn't really a crocheter at this time, it was something that I could tackle because it was basically just granny squares. Now, worn around the neck, this really, really is an effective scarf. I love it. And every time I wear it, people stop me. I just love the color combination in here. This is called Mary. And it attracted me because of the short rows I wasn't really terribly familiar with short rolls. And these were lots and lots of short rolls. And I loved, I loved, this was the original colorway. I loved the original colorway. And uh, I went on to try and duplicate the picture in the magazine. A friend of mine who, who is a photographer helped me. I might stick a couple of those pictures in there. It was that, that was a fun uh, photo shoot. This was a, uh, a garment that I decided to knit to use up spare balls or extra balls, or maybe they were on sale, I don't know. But I, ha I didn't have enough in the one um, dye lot. And you know how they tell you you've got to watch dye lots? Well, if you look at this, you can see there's a very, very subtle striping in it. And that's because I used two, the one uh, dye lot for two rows and then changed over to the other dye lot. And it actually gave a really nice, luxurious effect. I really like how this came out. I might make another one of these. These are very handy to have on a plane. You can just throw them over your over your head, keep sure your arms are free. You can eat and whatever, or just bundle them up around your neck. Easy Folded Poncho by uh, Church Mouse. Look at this. Something else crochet. This is some um, from one of uh, what's it called? Uh, Marie Wallen's, I think, winter crochet. 
her one of her first independent books when she was still um, when she left Rowan but was still using Rowan yarns. I love this. It's nice simple crochet once you get the pattern and I, I learned how to make absolutely nice straight uh, edges because yes they're sewn up there's underarm seams and how to shape a neckline. I really like this design. Looks great with jeans. Can't remember the name of this, but it is a Marie Wallen. It's a cardigan, beautiful camel color. Um, what attracted me to this pattern was the fact that the, the bottom and the sleeve have a stranded work uh, pattern on them, but the front has this intarsia patterning sort of an intarsia stranded patterning. You'll see the blue is carried behind, but it's, so it's intarsia, but the uh, camel is carried behind the blue. It's really an interesting knit. I love the way this fits. It fits perfectly. I'd like to make another one of these without any patterning at all. Maybe just contrasting ribs and necklines, don't know. Uh, I don't have it here, but Marie Wallen's first uh, Farrell Club was a blanket using all sorts of patterns that she had previously done in felted tweed and um, well it's not finished it's downstairs that's why it's not here in this pile because this is strictly finished garments I have a lot of garments that haven't been finished maybe that's the subject for a, um, if I really want to get serious about owning up to my stash addiction uh, and starteritis anyway another time so this is another Marie Wallen uh, Fair Awe Club I quite like this um, the shape of this garment I like the big front band um, now you'll notice the pattern that goes across the sleeve goes right up and across the back the original design had sort of an insert in here and I didn't like that. So I did change that. And I think, to be honest, I think that made the pattern better. The, I like the patterning on this garment, but I absolutely love the pattern underneath the arm. And it's really, to me, it's like wasted. That should have been on the front. Just my opinion, because I don't wear this very much either. Unfortunately. Then, CAFE Facet, if you don't know CAFE, CAFE Facet, um, added some really bright colors to the felted tweed uh, color range. You can see that they're sort of quite muted so far. And then, uh, but CAFE loves his color, so he added some gorgeous, gorgeous bright colors. And there was a, a collection that came out it's still available, obviously, because it's felted tweed and it's cafe. And this scarf was an homage to these new colors and stripes, like how you can't beat stripes. And I love to wear this um, in the winter. I've got uh, a navy blue puffer coat and it just looks great with it. See when it's all trolled up around your neck, love it. And then this was an interesting, um, an interesting knit. This is an Arna and Carlos uh, design. It's got a, it's got a Nordic name. I can't remember, but this was their layered, um, sort of layered. What do they call it? Layered color work. What you do is you knit each of these motifs as an intarsia. So it's the same idea as the front of Marie Wallen's. Um, but, but you, you're knitting them, but you, you're always carrying the back color, the basic color, the, the clay color. And then you add the, the felted tweed and you hold it in addition to the clay color. And then you get this really beautiful, subtle motif that appears. It's not, um, it's sort of like hey, blurred out. I sort of like it. This isn't the first time I, and this was the first time I made, um, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't the first time, but this was when I was in my let's make pom-poms out of Kid Silk Haze phase. I just love Kid Silk Haze pom-poms. I wear this a lot. 
can't remember what the name of this is. It's like a swancho. It's a poncho with sleeves. And let me see, I gotta get the front. Okay, this is the front. It has this little little patterning in the body, and then you put these little uh, French knots all over it. Um, I'm not sure about this. I might take the French knots out, or I might go back and make the French knots bigger, or I might put French knots randomly all over the whole thing. I don't know, if you've got any ideas about this, uh, let me know. This is another great garment. You can just put it on. It's got little tiny sleeves at the bottom here, and it's very comfortable to wear and keeps your arms loose. And I've, I've worn it at night watching TV, you know. Ooh. Next up is, um, can't remember what the name of this was, but this is Cave's. This is quite recent, a few years ago, maybe it was during COVID, it's all a blur. <laughs> I love the color work on this. And this, were, this was little um, intarsia blocks. And I did my own thing because I'm not really an intarsia person. And what I did was I used the color, the intarsia color, but I stranded the background color across the back. So it's not really intarsia, intarsia, and it makes these little little squares a little bit thicker, but it worked for me and it allowed me to finish this gorgeous, uh, gorgeous scarf and I just love it. And you hear me talking about Intarsia all the time. I really need to get um, a handle on Intarsia someday. And then this is my latest design in felted tweed. This was a Martin story. I did, I showed this on um, one of my video blogs and it was a little bit, I felt it was a little bit big and I don't know if I ever went back, came back and said to you, I was really brave. I washed it, I let it dry to a certain point and then I threw it in the dryer. And it didn't felt, it just, it just fold and it, gave it much more body and I love the way it fits now. I put little shoulder pads in it and it really holds nice. And I love this French mustard color. And it goes, these two go together really well, which you wouldn't think, but they actually do. So now the last, the right now my current project in uh, Felted Tweed is um, Martin Story's Midwinter Knit Along. And we're doing this little blanket. It's not a big project. You know how some of the Rowan blankets are absolutely huge, the ones I've done in the past. This is, I think, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not big. And there are different motifs. This is the first one. I've got eight of those. I think I've done seven. This is the second motif, which is this reindeer and the third motif is another um, sort of snowflake design or Nordic rose I would say this is more of a Nordic rose design and on Thursday block number four will come out so I'm uh, I'm doing it all just in the clay and this is um is it seafair anyway it's a, with a dark navy color so that is my most recent felted tweed um, project that I'm working on. So I am going to uh, show in part two for Magazine 74, the story of the new felted tweed, um, sorry, the story of uh, fine tweed haze. And I didn't do it, I just thought we had enough to talk about here in felted tweed. It's been in the rolling line for 24 years, so there's enough to talk about there. I'm gonna save the new yarn for part two because I've actually got some on my on the way to me and I'm hoping to have some practice of knitting it up before I actually review it. 
So the other thing I wanted to just to say was, oh, about mosaic knitting. Let me get my mosaic knitting sample. So the Gully Design by Lisa Richardson, I'll stick a picture up here, is done in mosaic knitting. It's almost like a little Chanel jacket, isn't it? And so it, it, this uh, fabric is absolutely gorgeous. And um, while I was knitting this, I have way too many ideas. But while I was knitting this, I thought that, boy, wouldn't this be nice with some um, um, metallic thread in it? Wouldn't that be a, that would be an interesting swatch to knit. Anyway, so you use one solid shade of felted tweed and one shade of felted tweed color because the color changes. It's a very long color change and that's why you see the, the colors changing on the, the body pieces of the, this design. The, to mosaic knit, the chart has two rows and you knit across and you're only ever using one row. Sorry, you're only ever using one color and that one color, you knit the stitches that are shown in that color and you slip purlwise the other the other stitches that you don't work. So when you're uh, mosaic knitting a right side row, you slip with the yarn in back. When you're mosaic knitting, you're still a, a wrong side row, you're still knitting, but you slip the stitches with the yarn in front facing you. So this is garter stitch mosaic knitting. You're always knitting and you're slipping the stitches either with the yarn in front or back, always on the, the back side uh, of the garment, whether it's facing you or not. Sounds complicated, it really isn't. Get some stitches, get some needles out and put some stitches on and try it. So the, um, the scarf, the cover pattern that uh, Martin did in mosaic knitting, it is done in stocking stitch mosaic knitting. So you're knitting one row and purling back, but the same thing applies. You're always slipping the stitches that you don't work and carrying the yarn across on the back side, whether the back, the, the back side on a knit row is away from you, and the back side on a purl row is facing you. So you're always carrying the yarn across the stitches that are that are um, slipped. The thing about mosaic knitting is it is really row dense. That was the wrong side. Here's the right side. It's very row intense. I think it's 52 or 56 rows to 10 centimeters. So it's you have to be a dedicated knitter to knit this because it's really a lot of rows to get you won't see much happening for a while but it's a very interesting um, way of doing color work and while I use these two shades I'm thinking boy I should have used these two shades that would have been spectacular because this ball of felted tweed color has some nice color work inside and I think with this, it would have been, talk about fabulous, eh? Hmm. Anyhow, too many ideas, too many things to knit as usual. Thanks very much for dropping by Life LDC Knits. Let me know if you, there's anything you'd like to know about a particular pattern and you don't have access to the information. The Magazine 74. And let me know if there's something that you are going to knit. I hope I've helped you um, um, make, you know, helped you make an informed decision about what pattern you want to knit. So until next time, happy knitting. <laughs>